Well, our great Pyrenees Tuck Tuck just had his first birthday, so I thought it'd be perfect timing to share with you folks five things you should consider before bringing a fluffy giant like this home with you. First, Great Pyrenees are one of the oldest breeds of livestock guardian dogs and don't need to be trained to be protective. That part is built in, but what they do need to be shown is where to be protective at and giving clear boundaries. Anywhere these noble dogs can go, they think it's their sworn duty to protect, so having strong fences or a leash, especially if you live near roads, is a must. They don't need an overabundance of land, but giving them adequate space to patrol in the early mornings and late at night will go a long way towards preventing boredom behaviors like destructive chewing or digging. Dusk and dawn are when Great Pyrenees are the most active. They are famously nocturnal dogs, having been bred to protect livestock during the times when the farmer is asleep and predators are most active. In the urban setting, or if you plan to keep them inside at night, understand that your pup may spend up to a few hours per night barking at anything that makes noise. They also do this during the day too, so... This makes the Pyrenees an amazing protector, but not so much as a house guest. While they can be fiercely protective one minute, the next they can be loving companions for you and your whole family. Great Pyrenees are even known for being able to tell the difference between a strange neighborhood dog and a family pet. Here, you can see how Tuck Tuck tones down his power and loves to play with my brother's French bulldog, Mowgli. Great Pyrenees have a wonderful temperament with small creatures, but they are so large and clumsy that they can accidentally knock people over or into objects, so keep an eye out for that. Like other large breeds, independence, aka stubbornness, runs strong in the Great Pyrenees. These dogs were initially bred to protect their herds from a variety of threats such as wolves or bears, and to do this, they needed to be able to think independently. The trade-off for all that brain power these days, though, is that your Great Pyrenees may not always see the logic in your commands. Hey, what is that frisbee? Come! They might decide to do their own thing even after plenty of obedience training. If they detect a threat or smell a certain smelly smell, you can see their instincts take over as they head off to investigate whether you want them to or not. The incredibly dense coat that keeps the Great Pyrenees toasty even at negative 40 below here in Alaska does require regular maintenance so it stays effective and doesn't become irritating for your loyal hound. With multiple layers to their coat, mats can quickly accumulate, especially in places where snow and ice build up like their elbows, neck, or tail area. So be ready to spend a couple hours per week grooming them, depending on where you live. Well, that was five things to consider before bringing the Great Pyrenees like this home with you. But if you want to see one grow up here in Alaska, be sure to check out this playlist that starts about a year ago when we first brought our farm animals home. Speaking of which, and Tuk Tuk and I'll see you in the next one.